And if you were to compare it to any other risks, it would be really nothing to be afraid of. This time on UCLA Newsweek, myths and facts about radioactive fallout. Also, a new center for laboratory safety. And in brief, higher health risks in California's aging LGB community and doubling brain cancer survival. In the wake of the Fukushima nuclear plant crisis, Kaisuke Iwamoto dispels the myths surrounding radioactive fallout and its effect on the Western United States. If I think people understand that the risks are so low, and if you were to compare it to any other risks, it would be really nothing to be afraid of. It's really a matter of dose. The more energy you're going to deposit in the cell, the more damage you're going to produce, and more likely the cells are going to die. If it's much lower, the cells are quite capable of repairing this. It's very important with these risk analyses to keep everything in perspective. If a million people were exposed to 20 microsieverts, you'd expect one of those persons to develop some kind of cancer. Of those million people, you'd, probably, you'd expect over 200,000 to get cancer anyway. So that 20 microsieverts is increasing the number of cancers from 200,000 to 200,001. And that one in a million, just to put it in perspective, is similar to breathing Los Angeles uh, air for two days, one cigarette. So that's the kind of uh, dilution we're going to be expecting. It's negligible. So these are risks that are very small and that you actually have to weigh in order to really judge whether something is safe or not. Nancy Wayne and James Gibson discuss the first of its kind UCLA Center for Laboratory Safety and its trailblazing safety efforts. The Center for Lab Safety has a tripartite mission. One is to support research in laboratory safety, and the other is to take the outcome from that research and then turn that into best practices that we are going to implement here at UCLA and hopefully at the other uh, nine UC campuses, and then take the outcomes from those best practices okay, and provide important information for the global research community so they can emulate that. I mean, it's, it's not just changing the culture of the laboratory research community, it's in changing the culture of EHS as well. We've revamped our entire laboratory safety program. We've put a lot more uh, emphasis on accountability. Uh, we've done a lot more inspections. In fact, our inspection numbers have skyrocketed. They've had exponential increases in the number of inspections that we've done, and we've also improve the quality of the inspections. We have a quality assurance checks to make sure those inspections are actually good. We've increased the number of inspection parameters that we look for when we do an inspection. Uh, we actually have um, some um, requirements for the inspectors to actually make sure that they provide inspection reports the next business day. So the, after they do the inspection, the inspection report goes to the, the laboratory, which is important because we want to make sure the laboratory actually gets that report as soon as possible so they can make the, the corrections as soon as possible. We don't want the report to, to linger in our office for any length of time so that you know, those, those corrections aren't made. What we're seeing is a dramatic improvement okay, in uh, lab researchers following this personal protective equipment regulation, but we want to document that. We, want, we don't want it to be a feeling. Okay? We want to come up with numbers. Okay? And then, um, and then down the line, hopefully, we'll be able to gather data on whether or not we see a decrease in injuries in the laboratory. And now we'll look at more developments out of UCLA. A lack of immediate family support may impact the physical and mental health of the estimated 170,000 aging, self-identified lesbian, gay, and bisexual adults in California. The alarming study finds higher rates of a multitude of chronic ailments in homosexuals compared with their heterosexual counterparts. A new brain cancer vaccine doubled the survival time in about a third of patients in a Johnson Comprehensive Cancer Center early phase study. The vaccine, which is personalized for each patient based on that individual's tumor, is designed for patients fighting a form of brain cancer called glioblastoma. For more information on these and other stories, please visit newsroom.ucla.edu and tell us what you think on Twitter at UCLA Broadcast.